Hi, I'm Jake with Hearted Reflections, and I've got John here today, who is our Butcher Block Pro. And uh, John is with uh, Stone Ridge Woodcraft. What he's gonna do, he's gonna show us just some different ideas and treatment methods for our Butcher Block. Yep, today, Jake, uh, um, I've made up several samples here of different types of finishes that we've actually used on our countertops. Um, these are all on uh, beach, so it gives you a difference in the color variations and some of the durability. Uh, we but go, what, do you also think, can we use this on other butcher blocks or just primarily beach? Oh no, it'll, you can put it on, we've used them on the walnut, we've used them on pretty much every wood we've got. So. Okay. You'll notice some of the color differences in them, even though it's all the same species of wood, and it's actually out of the same uh, slab. So this one here is actually a, a Danish oil. It gives you a very nice finish. It's easy to apply. You wipe it on, let it soak a little bit, and wipe it back off again. Uh, sand a little bit between coats uh, with like a 400 grit paper. This one is going to be the, the main difference. You'll see how that's still blonde. That's holding the natural color. This is a water-based polyurethane, and that's typical with a water base. You're not going to get a color differential uh, in the rich golden colors like you would with a mineral-based. This one is actually a, it's a polyurethane for floors. Application on this one is actually very easy also because you pretty much flood the surface and go over it with a uh, lamb's wool applicator, just like you would a floor. You, you apply it and you go with the wood grain and, and it flows out real nice. You probably put two coats of that on for a butcher block countertop. You know, John, I, we've been manufacturing these for years and I've actually never heard of a, <clears throat> of a flooring mm -hmm. treatment before. Can you kind of take me, like, why would you choose that? Well, you figure that the traffic that a floor gets. Yeah. And the, the polyurethane for floors is a, is a little bit thicker base in it. And mm. so durability wise, your, your scratches, your scuffs, um, I, just, I just really like it for that. And it, the way it flows out into the wood uh, and gives you a smooth surface without a whole lot of uh, preparation. Um, you can actually sand to uh, uh, 150 on it instead of going clear up to a 320 like you might with some of the others. Okay. The next one is a spray on polyurethane, and this is actually just out of a can. Uh, for a larger project, it's probably not going to be your best bet economically, but it gives you a decent finish. It's easy to apply. Uh, letting it uh, dry between coats according to the manufacturer's specifications and sanding it to like a 320 uh, or better in between coats. And then the last one we actually have is on the opposite side of this one and it's actually my favorite. It's using the uh, cutting board oil and with this one I'll sand them to a 320, and when we go over that, uh, we'll, let the, we'll put the, uh, the oil on and let it soak in for probably about a half an hour, and I'll rub it down. And I'll, when I build them in the shop, that's what I'll do here in the shop. And then when we take it to the job site, when we're all done working and getting it installed, I'll do it again on a second and possibly a third coat, just to let it soak in and clean up. Um, but uh, maintenance wise on this one, it's going to take you a little bit more maintenance in the future. Uh, maybe once a month, depending on your conditions, you might want to just take some oil and rub it down again. All right, John, I tell you what, thanks for those fantastic mm -hmm. tips in finishing your block. Well, glad I can help.